إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له جل عن الشبيه والمثيل والند والنظير وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهديه الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل الله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما ثم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحدي حج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار. Dear respected brothers, as we all know, living in this country, something very monumental, something very historic, is going to be taking place in a couple of days' time. In actual fact, on Monday. And it is for this reason that every single person in this country has been given, an hol given a holiday. It's a bank holiday Monday. In order to represent the coronation of the new appointed king, Charles III. As Muslims living in this country, how is it that we should be reacting to this coronation? It is, is it something that we should celebrate? As we know that there will be street parties up and down the country, there may be neighbors coming round, giving us Union Jack flags to wave around. How should we as Muslims living in this country, as UK citizens, respond to the coronation? The first thing, brothers, to understand as Muslims, we need to understand what is being celebrated. Because sometimes, many of us may think, then what's the problem of just waving a few flags? What's the problem of celebrating the coronation of the new appointed king? The first thing to understand, brothers, and I'm gonna be mentioning three points as to the reasons, or the main reasons why we should not be celebrating the coronation. The first reason is that this coronation is a religious ceremony. In, 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 in English it's called the liturgy. A liturgy is a public ritual of worship performed by a religious group. And this liturgy is one which, the, which, is, which is considered to be a Christian act of worship that honors the ancient tradition of anointing the monarchs, the kings and the queens. And I want you to pay attention to this. Because this is not something that there's khilaf on or difference of opinion on. This statement that I'm going to mention right now is one which was mentioned by the most, the highest religious figure in the country, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Mulvey. And he said in April, just a few weeks ago, that the coronation is first and foremost an act of Christian worship. This is what the head of the Anglican Christian Church said a few weeks ago. Or should I say the Archbishop, Archbishop. So this is one reason as Muslims, we should not be partaking in this religious practice. It is not simply a cultural practice, but it is something which is entwined with Christian religious practices. But at the same time, Brothers, it is important that we do not mock the coronation. There may be, a, you know, unfortunately, with, you know, there, there is a, there's a poll that they carried out a few weeks ago in this country to ask the different age ranges of people what they think about the coronation, what do they think of the idea of having a monarchy in this country, 
And between the ages of 18 and 45, which would you can consider to be the young people or someone maybe past the youth, but young adults, the vast majority of them, and I'm talking about in the over 70, 60 or 70 percent of people during, uh, through this age range, they said that this is not something that we, we, uh, we want for the, for the country of the UK. So even though this may be a sentiment of the young adults in this country, living in this country, knowing that it is a religious practice, it does not mean it gives us the authorities to start mocking people who participate and celebrate the coronation. And this is backed by an ayah of the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ That Allah Jalla wa Ala says, O oh believers, do not insult what they invoke besides Allah, or they will insult Allah spitefully out of ignorance. So if we think by speaking out in a very disrespectful manner about not how we should not be partaking or celebrating the coronation, and we think that by doing this, they will start cursing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, insulting Islam, it is something that we should not do. And this is something that I am not going to be doing during this khutbah. I'm going to be talking about why as Muslims we shouldn't be celebrating the coronation, but I'll do it in the most respectful manner. The second issue, sorry, the, the, in such a connection to the first issue. But one of the things that we'll find people in this country doing is waving the Union Jack. First of all, what is the Union Jack? The Union Jack consists of three flags. So most of you are quite, may be quite familiar with this. It has, it consists of three flags. It has got the Red Cross, which represents England or St. George. It represents the, which looks like an ad sign. Then it, then it has a Red Cross, which goes, which looks like a multiplication sign. And this is connected to St. Patrick, which represented Ireland. And then it also has the white multiplication cross, which represents um, St. Andrew, which is the country of Scotland. So the Union Jack flag, in actual fact, doesn't represent Wales because the flag itself predates the creation of Wales because at that time when the flag was created, Wales was part of England. But what does this flag actually represent? Is it a, just a flag that we can wave it around and we can put it on t-shirts and it's just something which is unharmless as Muslims? No. Brothers, it's important that we need to look at the background of, the, of things that represent countries and represent nations. In his book, Nick Groom, 560 page book, he talks about the background behind the Union Jack. What is the story behind the Union Jack? Why is it that all these different colors are there? What do they represent? In this book, Nick Groom, he says that the Red Cross, which is like a plus sign for, which represents England and connected to St. George, and it is actually, in actual fact, the flag of England represents the bloody cross, the red represents the blood, the bloody cross of where the Christian Jesus was crucified. <coughs> and as Muslims we know that Allah that Isa alayhi salam, the Muslim Jesus, was not crucified on the cross. Allah Jalla wa Ala says, وَمَا قَتَلُوهُ وَمَا وَلَكِن That they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him, but it looked like they did this. There's also a cross which is on the Scottish flag. It's white, but it's got blue around it. And then all of this together, the Union Jack flag as a whole, the, at the cross which, look, which is in like an addition sign, and the two crosses of, the, of Ireland and of uh, Scotland, which are as like multipl multiplication signs, they represent, these three crosses crossed, 
are the monogram of the name of Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Someone may argue, brothers, that this is something that has no main meaning now. We have moved on from the time of what it means. If you get a, a non-Muslim, an atheist, a Jew, a, 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 his, a, a Buddhist, or a Jew, or a, uh, you know, a Sikh or a Hindu waving this flag, they don't mean, it doesn't mean anything to them. It just represents the country in which we live in. This may be true Islamically, that when certain things have lost its meaning, then you can do it. So for instance, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimullah, he would talk about the Moroccan and the Algerian hoodie. So this is what I'm wearing right now. The Moroccans, as you know, they wear a cloak and they have a hoodie that they wear. Originally, the Moroccan Jews used to wear this and it was part, partly connected to the Jews. But over time, it lost its significance and it's no longer connected to the Jews, it's just become something which is cultural. So there may be certain things which are connected to a religious group that no longer have the same significance that it originally had. But when it comes to the cross, brothers, it can never lose its significance. This is what the scholars of Al-Islam have mentioned. So waving the flag and thinking this is not something which is big, brothers, we have to be careful of this. I am in no way saying that someone who waves a flag, that this is someone who takes out someone out of the fold of Islam. No, I'm not saying this. But this is something that as Muslims, we should not be doing, knowing that this represents the cross that which the Christian Jesus was crucified. The second reason, brothers, why we shouldn't be celebrating the coronation that's taking place on Monday is because our allegiance is not to any king, but our allegiance as Muslims is to the truth. What we have been asked to do, and you may have seen the article on BBC News and other places, <coughs> that we have all been asked to make an oath. In Arabic it's called a bay'ah, a pledge of allegiance. And this pledge of allegiance means, I swear that I will pay true allegiance to your majesty, and to your heirs and successors according to the law, so help me God. But as Muslims, we do not pledge our allegiance to any human being. Let me re repeat this again. As Muslims, we do not re uh, swear allegiance to any human beings. It is true that if there was a Khalifa that we would have to, as Muslims, we have to pay allegiance to the Khalifa. But we do not pledge allegiance or give bay'ah, as Muslims, we do not give bay'ah to that Khalifa as a being. But we give pledge of allegiance to that Khalifa as a function. And there is a massive difference between the two. Because as that Khalifa, he represents Islam. He represents the interests of Muslims. And once he has broken his allegiance of what it means to be a Khalifa, that bay'ah can be broken. A third reason, brothers and sisters, why we shouldn't be celebrating this coronation is because this is money not spent well. The UK, the United Kingdom, has the sixth strongest economy in the world, and yet most of its population is suffering. So many people are going on strike. The nurses, the teachers, the junior, the junior doctors, and even the train operators. They are not asking for an increase in their wages. They are asking that their wages are in line with inflation because in 2010, for many of them, their increase in wages, or so-called increase in wages, was frozen. There are twice as many food banks in this country than McDonald's. Can you imagine that? There are twice as many food banks in this country than McDonald's. 1,350 McDonald's outlets, two, more than 2,500 food banks. 
coronation that is taking place, and officially it lasts for three days, which is Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, but if the ceremony is going to be taking on Monday, will cost an estimated around a hundred million pounds. Now, if we look at the way that this government has spent money, I am not saying that this is the worst situation or the worst example of how the money has been spent by the government, because we have the PPE contracts and the waste, of the, uh, which amounts around four billion, four billion pounds, which was written off by Rishi Sunak, who was the uh, who, who, uh, who, who wrote off the, the debt. All of these things that could have solved so many of the problems of majority of the of the people who are living in this country. And this is the this is another reason, brothers and sisters, why we should not be celebrating this. And someone may argue that it is through the coronation, it is through the fact that we have a monarchy and so on and so forth, that they can it is through these events that brings in tourism, that it will strengthen the economy. And that is a good argument. But what I will say in respect to that, that who are benefiting from this tourism? Is it the people who visit the food banks? Is it the junior doctors? Is it the nurses? Is it the teachers? No. It is the aristocracy. It is the upper classes of this country who are benefiting from these, from these things and not the general average person on the streets of the UK. So there may be an urge, brothers and sisters, to celebrate the coronation. And unfortunately, it's very sad to see that on Monday, there is a masjid in the UK who actually had a poster where they announced that they will soon be celebrating the coronation. But taking these three things into account, number one, the fact that it is a religious ceremony, and as Muslims, we cannot partake in the ceremony of other religious Religious, uh, religious uh, other religions. Number two, the fact that our allegiance is not to any particular being, but is our, our allegiance is only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth. And number three, this is not the best way that the money of this country is being spent. Subhanahu wa wa bihamdi wa ilaha Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Unfortunately, we will find many Muslims or some Muslims who will be celebrating this Monday. So first of all, we should advise them with wisdom and with good manners. And we should list down some of the reasons that I've actually mentioned. But a deeper question is why is it that as Muslims in this country we may feel the urge to celebrate the coronation? One of the reasons is because we may feel that we need to prove our Britishness. First of all, brothers and sisters, we cannot get away from the fact that we were born here, that we live here, that we were brought up here. Us celebrating the coronation or not celebrating the coronation doesn't take our Britishness away. Does being British contradict being a Muslim? No, we are British. There's nothing that we can do about this. But what is so British about the coronation anyway? Yes, it is true that the king is the king of Britain. But in reality, he is not really British in and of himself. The house of Windsor, the name, the house of Windsor, by which Charles and Queen Elizabeth, the late Queen Elizabeth, was part of, was originally called Saxe Goburg, uh, Coburg and Gotha. And they changed it to Windsor in 1917 because of anti-German sentiments relating to the, uh, relating because of the First World War. To this day, the royal family still continues some of its traditions of its German ancestors. They do this privately, such as exchanging 
presents of Christmas on Christmas Eve. This is something that the Germans actually do. <coughs> the king's bloodline is made up of roughly half German ancestors. So we, when we try to convince ourselves, or convince others, or Muslims try to convince themselves, <coughs> that this is connected to our Britishness. No, this is not connected to our Britishness. When the king himself, his father is Greek and his mother, half of her ancestors are half German. What's so British about that? And this really, brothers and sisters, comes down to one thing. <coughs> this comes down to one thing. And that one thing is an inferiority complex. Brothers and sisters, you are British. There's nothing that the fact that you can do about that, that you are, you are British. But you not celebrating the coronation doesn't make you less British. We are Muslims in this country. The second largest religion in this country, the Muslim, according to the last census. Being Muslim and being British is not a contradiction as long as we are not going against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without contradicting your Britishness. <coughs> this inferiority complex is one in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attempted to break during his lifetime. One time Khabab ibn Arat radiallahu anhu he came to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, as he was resting by the Kaaba. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, we're suffering so much, just make dua for us. And the Messenger of Allah, وسلم, he said that there was a time when a person was brought and his body was sawed in half. And they went through so much suffering, but this did not stop them from saying, La ilaha illallah. But you people are a hasty people. He is talking to the companions. By having an inferiority complex, you have a victimhood. You have a victim mentality. And this is something that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he never had, or he never wanted for his people. Brothers and sisters, we are Muslims. And we should be proud of the fact that we are Muslims. We should not feel embarrassed of not celebrating the coronation that's taking place on Monday. Because I have demonstrated that the one who doesn't celebrate the coronation doesn't take your Britishness away. It doesn't, they will not suddenly start taking your passports away and send you to another country. It won't happen. But at the same time, we have to be wise in how we do not celebrate this coronation. We don't go around saying disrespectful things about something that the people of the many some people of this country hold dear. We just get on Monday, so it's just an extra holiday for us. We take our kids to the park. We go to maybe some events if there's any uh, talks taking place, and it's just a normal day. And this is all we need to do as Muslims living in this country. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be able to, to, to live as Muslims in this country. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to remain steadfast upon this religion. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to die as Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all of those Muslims who are being around, pressed around the world, whether they be in Palestine, in Afghanistan, in Kashmir, wherever they may be in the world, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شهد الله لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وتبليك أخي مسلم